Voices of the Void is a game developed by Eternity Dev and is available for free on itch.io. In the game, you are tasked with locating and processing signals from space for a research company. The purpose of this tutorial is to help explain the mechanics of the game to new players. This tutorial will cover several core aspects of the game. It will cover the menu, controls and interaction, signals, reports, packages, the laptop, and maintenance. Keep in mind that this tutorial was made during update 0.5.2. Any information presented here is subject to change. To begin playing, click Start Game to bring up the save file menu. Now select which game mode you would like to play. To play the game as normal, select Story. To create a new save file, first create a name for your save file in the Enter Slot Name field. Then click Create. This will create your new save file. To load a save file, click on the save file and click Play. In the event something goes awry in your save file, or you have just updated the game, certain elements need to be reset. In order to reset elements of a save file, select the save file, then click Reset to bring up the Reset menu. In this menu, you can select elements of a saved reset. If you are playing the save file for the first time after updating, it is recommended to select Events and Objects. This will reset and or remove all objects, including objects you have moved, objects you have purchased, and any objects in your inventory. Before confirming the reset, set the day counter to the day your save was on, or whichever day you wish to continue from. To confirm which elements you want to reset, press Apply. You can also bring up the help menu at any time to read useful tips about the game. We will now be covering the gameplay. You can press Escape to bring up the pause menu. From here, you can save the game manually. To move around in any direction relative to where you are looking, press the W, A, S, and D keys for moving forward, left, back, and right respectively. Move your mouse to look around. To jump, press spacebar. To crouch, hold control. Sprint, hold shift while moving in a direction. To turn your flashlight on and off, press F. Notice that in the top right, the green value is decreasing while you have the flashlight on. Keep it off to conserve battery. To open or close your inventory, press Tab. To ragdoll, press C. To zoom, press and hold X. We will now move on to interacting with objects. Some objects have a special function. Press Alt-E to perform them. This food here can be eaten. To pick up an object, look at it and hold E. While an object is picked up, you can hold the right mouse button and move your mouse around to rotate it. To move it closer or farther from you, use the scroll wheel. To throw the object, press left click. To hold the object, press R. To place the object directly into your inventory while picking it up, press Alt. While holding an object, press left click or right click to perform functions with the object. Different objects have different functions. For food, right clicking eats it. To place the object at where you are looking, press Alt plus R. To place the object into your inventory while holding it, press R. Some objects are too heavy to pick up and or hold. To drag a heavy object, hold Shift plus E and then move in the direction you wish to move it. When an item is in your inventory, there are several things you can do with a selected object. The first option is to put. If you have opened a container, you will have the option to put the item in the container. The second option is to drop it. Press drop to drop the item directly at your feet. You can also place the object directly where you're looking at. Press info to bring up information about the item. Press hold to hold the object in your hand. Certain objects have the ability to be equipped by pressing the Equip button. These items get sent to the Equipment screen. To unequip an item, just click it. Keep in mind your inventory has a volume limit. Once this limit is reached, anything that takes up more than your available volume cannot be placed in your inventory. 
There are two stats you need to take care of while playing, food and sleep. You can see these stats in the bottom left of your screen. Food can be restored by eating a food item. Sleep can be restored by sleeping in a bed or by using the toilet. Letting these stats diminish too low can result in consequences. For the main part of the game, your job is to find, download, save, and process signals from space. To facilitate these functions, there are four computers in the base. You must learn to use all four in order to play. I will go through the computers in the order that they will be used in gameplay. The first computer is the coordinates computer. The coordinates computer is for scanning the sky and finding coordinates to signals. First, we must scan for signals. To scan for signals, press shift. This will light up red arrows pointing in the direction of signals. They will go away after a brief time. The size of the arrow indicates how close a signal is to the crosshair. The smaller, the closer. You have to wait for the red cooldown value in the bottom left to finish before you can scan again. To move the crosshair, press the arrow keys in whichever direction you wish to move it. Move the crosshair to find a signal. They look like ripples, such as this one. Once you locate a signal, move the crosshair to be over the ripple. Now, to ping the signal, press enter. After a moment, you will get a response. There is a random chance that the ping will fail and you will lose the signal, forcing you to find a new signal. If the ping succeeds, you have successfully located a signal and the satellites will begin to rotate. Now you can move on to the downloading computer. The downloading computer is for downloading signals that you have located. Once the satellites have finished rotating, you can begin the downloading process. This will be evident by the image in the top right screen changing and the sound changing as well. There are two filters that you have to adjust in order to maximize the download speed, that being the polarity and frequency filters. You adjust these using the respective set of knobs below. The goal is to get the output data percentage, that's the yellow text, to as close to 100% as possible. That way, the signal can be downloaded more efficiently. Both filters have a blue square toggle button. This allows you to adjust the filter's offset speed value, here. To adjust a filter's speed value, there are three knobs that control the speed in three different increments of increasing size. Hold E on one of the knobs and move your scroll wheel up or down to increase or decrease the speed value. The speed value can be either positive or negative to increase or decrease the filter's offset value. The closer you are to the correct filter offset value, the closer the yellow output data value approaches 100%. The first filter is polarity. For polarity, the line of the circle will start spinning as you adjust the speed. For polarity, you might not see the percentage value changing. In that case, you must change the polarization by pressing E on the polarization knob to the left. This will switch it between three values, right, linear, and left. With the line spinning, switch between these values until you notice which polarity makes the percentage change. For this one, it is the left one. Then adjust the speed with the knobs until you get as close to 100% as possible. Next is the frequency filter. For frequency, the line becomes more wavy the more closer you are to the correct offset value. This filter has a minimum and maximum offset value between 0 and 1000. Unlike the polarity filter, it does not wrap around back to 0 and vice versa. For this, it is better to rely on looking at the percentage value to tell how close you are rather than looking at the wave. This filter is simpler and does not have an additional knock. Just adjust the speed until you get closer to 100% output. Setting the speed value back to zero will cause it to stop increasing or decreasing. You will want to stop it when the output data percentage is close to 100%. Wait until the green percentages on the right get to 100%. Detector status will increment automatically, while downloaded will increment with the closer you got the filter outputs to 100%. Once both green percentages are 100%, hit the bottom green circular save signal button. If you did this correctly, you have successfully downloaded a signal. This signal will now show up on the playing computer. You are now done with the downloading computer. The playing computer is for playing signals, as well as transferring them to and from drives. The black scroll bar in the middle will control which signal you have selected, being the one inside the rectangle. Hold E and scroll your mouse's scroll wheel to scroll up and down. Note that you can scroll past the last signal in the list indefinitely and can get lost. Just scroll all the way back up to zero to find your signals again. To start or stop playing the signal, press the right yellow diamond. To save the signal to the laptop from this computer, press the right green circle button. Upload a signal onto a drive. First, put an empty drive into the drive slot. 
Then hit the left yellow diamond upload extract data button. The light on the drive should turn on. To extract the data from the drive and put it into the playing computer, press the same button while there is a signal on the drive. You are now done with the playing computer. The processing computer is for cleaning up signals to get cleaner data when played back. Note that you cannot process signals until you have upgraded the computer level from the laptop under the Upgrades tab. This will cost points to do, so you will have to earn some points by completing daily tasks first. To process a signal, take a drive with a signal on it and put it in the processing computer's drive slot. Then hit the yellow diamond button to extract the signal to the computer. Then press the bottom green circular Start Process button to start processing. Wait for the computer's bar to complete. You will then have processed a signal up a level. A signal can be processed up to the computer level to which you have upgraded to. The maximum level is 3, where the full signal will be uncovered, sometimes containing interesting audio, visuals, or text when played back. Once a signal is done processing, press the yellow diamond button to upload the signal back to the drive. Higher level signals will light up to 3 blue lights on the drive, depending on the signal's level. You are now done with the processing computer. This concludes the signals section. As part of the daily tasks, in addition to collecting signals, you are also required to write reports. These reports require you to go to specific satellites and run a command on them to get a hash code. You will then write down the hash code on a piece of paper. While holding a piece of paper or the notebook, right click to begin writing. On the right you can press the report button under templates to generate the template to write the codes in. You will now need to go to the satellites. To find the satellites go to a console and interact with it. Type in sv.target and the name of the satellite you wish to go to. Then press enter. This will set the polarity of the compass in the bottom right of your screen to point towards the satellite. Now just make your way to the satellite. When you get to the satellite, interact with the console and type sv.hash. This will print out the hash code that you need. Now write down that hash code in your paper in place of the X characters. Repeat this for each satellite you need to get a hash code from until your report is complete. To complete a daily task, you must create a package that contains the requested drives and or report. To prepare a package, grab a drive box and set it down. Press Alt plus E to take the lid off the box. Pick up the lid and move it off to the side. Pick up and place each drive you intend to send inside the box. Now place the lid back on top of the box. Now take your report paper and place it on top of the lid. Your package is now prepared. Go place the package in the middle of the marker in the garage. Open the panel on the wall and call the drone. Note that if there was a report on the lid of the box, it will visually disappear. Do not worry, it is still there. Now just wait for the drone to come and pick up the package and return it. Once the drone returns the package, you will be rewarded points for completing a daily task. You can see your points in the top left of the screen. From the laptop you can do a variety of things. Upgrades will upgrade the computers in different ways, making processes faster and or easier. Remember to upgrade computer level in order to process signals. Modules are additions to things that make your life easier. Details about upgrades and modules can be found in the help menu. The signals tab shows you all signals that you have saved to the laptop from the playing computer. From here you can play them, make a copy of them back on the playing computer, rearrange them, and delete them. Note. If you copy a signal, it will be marked as a copied signal. Sending these will not reward you with points. Though, you can upgrade them to higher levels which you can then send for points. Email allows you to see messages that have been sent to you. Most importantly, daily tasks which will tell you how many drives and of which level they want, as well as which satellites to write reports on. In the store, you can purchase items. The most important items are drives, drive boxes, and food. One MRE and one drive will be supplied by the drone daily, but drive boxes will not be. Don't run out. The other three tabs, Advancements, Cameras, and Photos, are extra features that are not critical to the core gameplay and will not be covered. 
As you play, the servers and satellites will require maintenance so that downloading signals does not suffer. There are two types of maintenance, repairing servers and calibrating satellites. At random, servers will go down, requiring repairs. To tell if a server is down, go to a console and type sv.ping to ping all servers. If a server is down, the text will read received 0 out of 4 packages with red text. Now go to the server and interact with it. You then have to play a minigame where you calculate the sum of two numbers and select the correct number. The numbers range from 0 to 9. If a sum would result in a double digit number, take the second digit. If it results in a negative number, ignore the negative sign, just take the number. Once you have completed the minigame, you will have repaired the server. Satellites will lose calibration over time and need to be recalibrated. To recalibrate satellites, go to a console. To check the calibration of all servers, type sd.calch. This will print out the precision of each satellite. To calibrate a specific satellite, type sd.cal and then the name of the satellite. To calibrate all satellites, type sd.calall. This concludes the gameplay guide for Voices of the Void. I hope this guide has been informative and helpful. I hope it compels you to check out the game and support the development.